Welcome to the Goodyear City Council meeting. We're excited to have you be a part of this important public process. Tonight, you will have the opportunity to address City Council on both non-agenda and agenda items. The agendas and the speaker request cards are located on the tables outside of council chambers. You must fill out a speaker card in order to address the city council. Please hand in your completed card to the city clerk before the start of the meeting. If the meeting has already begun, please hand it to any city staff. You may also check the I do not wish to speak option on the card. This allows you to still voice your opinion on an item on the record without having to speak. Public comment on a non-agenda item will take place during the citizen comment portion of the evening. These are items that don't appear on tonight's formal agenda. The city clerk will call your name when it's time for you to speak. At that time, please approach the podium and state your name for the record. We ask that you speak clearly into the microphone. You'll have a maximum of three minutes and there is a timer visible from the podium. When the light changes from green to yellow, your time is coming to an end. When the light turns red, your time is up. Note that you may also choose not to speak if other speakers before you have said what you wanted to say. Shouting, cheering, and loud noises will not be tolerated, and violators may be removed for disrupting the meeting. Goodyear City Council meetings stream live on Facebook and YouTube, and online at GoodyearAZ.gov. Thank you for your participation in tonight's meeting. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting on March 25th, 2019. Please join Councilmember Laura Tano in the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation. I have a lot of books underneath here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, we thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon our city and all the bright future that you are shining for us to see. We wish that you protect those that serve us in our city, on the streets, and those that serve this fabulous country. We ask that you watch out for all of our citizens, and we ask that you give us the wisdom and strength to make wise decisions for our city. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Council and Laura Tano, for that invocation. Everyone is here, and to remind you, uh, Councilmember Stipp is on the phone. Are you there, Bill? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. All right, so we'll go to the communications. We have one item tonight. Parks and Recreation staff will provide an update on the upcoming Summer Recreation Aquatics Program. And Recreation Supervisor Deanna Ortiz will be presenting. Deanna? Good evening, Mayor and Council. I would like to share a little bit about our summer preview with you this evening. We are super excited. Our splash pad will be opening April 15th at the Goodyear Community Park. This is an opportunity for residents to go cool off. As you know, the weather's uh, getting much nicer outside, so it's a place for the kids to come and play and have a great time. Secondly, some of the special events we will be having this summer the first one will be the Kids to Park Day. That'll be May 18th at the Goodyear Community Park, as well as hosting the 4th of July event at the Goodyear Ballpark. I will be sharing some aquatic information and summer recreation information as well. And then some opportunities we have for volunteering this summer for 12 to 16 year olds old in our summer rec program and our aquatics program. So first we have a open swim that will be op our pool will open on May 25th through August the 3rd will be open Monday through Friday from 1 to 4 and Saturdays and Sundays from 1 to 6. We will have three family nights going on this summer May 25th June 29th and July 27th we are bringing back our fitness programs 
The cardio way was super popular this year, or excuse me, last year. So we will be having a spring session and then we will have a summer session for the cardio wave and water aerobics. We also have uh, registration is currently open for our swim and dive team. And next up, we have summer recreation. We're super excited that we will have three summer locations. It'll be Desert Thunder, Copper Trails, and Sentara Mirage. That is for completed kindergarten through entering eighth grade. Our hours are Monday through Friday from 7.30 to 5.30. We do a variety of activities, including arts and crafts, games, sports, guest speakers. This year, we'll have some themes, including futuristic fun, sports extravaganza, and around the world. We will be offering an additional optional field trip pack, as we have in the past. We'll be going to Urban Air, which is the new business opening, so we're super excited to bounce around there. Uh, Harkins Movie Theater, Bolero, and The Pool. Registration will be Monday and Tuesday, our beginning Monday, for Goodyear residents. It is April Fool's. We've been getting a lot of questions about that, but that is correct. We'll have uh, weekly options available, half-day programs, as well as the full-day programs which will be the, for the full seven weeks. So if you're a little too old for our program, we have two opportunities to be a uh, junior leader within the summer recreation program. So this will give uh, teens the opportunity to get some interviewing skills, be mentored by our staff, and receive on-the-job training. For our aquatic side, we have a junior guard program where the kids can go through a four-week training as well as getting 40 hours of volunteer on the job. So they'll do things such as um, learning customer service skills. They will participate with the swim lessons, so they kind of get that on-the-job training as well as facility maintenance. So we're super excited. This program has been very popular for us and has actually, we've hired several staff from our junior guard and junior leader program. Okay. Applications are online, so please share and spread the word if you know somebody that might be interested. So we're super excited. I will be back in the fall to share our success stories. And um, we're just looking for a very fun summer, keep the kids busy and out of trouble. I would like to introduce two staff that we have in the audience. The first one is Heath Joyner. He's our new pool manager. And the second key staff is Mercy Medina. She is one of... <laughs> the rest of our staff are getting ready. They're still finishing college, getting ready to come back and have a fun, exciting summer. Well, thank you, Deanna. That was fine. It was a good presentation. It's exciting. Council, any other comments? Yes, Councilman. I know that Parks and Rec does a lot of amazing things year round, but the summer rec is really the heart and soul and it really hits the needs of the community, working families and, and just giving that support for uh, child, child enrichment. It's not child care, it's child enrichment. And I love that you have that pathway for the teens to get involved that can even lead to employment. So just thank you for what you're doing with that. It, it's so important and it's just integral to our community. Thank you. Councilmember Laura Chano. I, I just want to echo a great job and, and welcome the staff and, and thank them for all their hard work. I was wondering, are you you're gonna have family nights? You're gonna do I think last year you did some teen nights. If those were successful, or are you gonna try to do that again to get we'll the probably older kids? try to do one teen night at the pool this summer. It, it's kind of a hit or miss. We had some bad weather last year, but we will try to schedule one. That would be great because I know sometimes the teens that can't quite drive yet, but they don't want to hang out with their little brothers and sisters. So that would be wonderful. Thank you. Councilman Hampton. I'm going to reiterate. I think it's a great program. I think all the programs are great. I know my kids both did the uh, swim lessons last year, so that was really good, and we I, we really enjoyed it, and they, they learned, and they're swimming a lot better now, so thank you. And then, yeah, to everybody else's point as well, the Summer Rec yeah. is a great program. I know that sells out pretty quick. I already see the chatter on the different social media. So you got to get you got to do it quickly, so people are excited, and they see the value in it, and they want to be a part of it, so thank you. 
And is it still the three three schools? Three out of we will have three schools. Yes, okay. just like last summer, we'll have okay. two seven week programs and one six week. All right, great. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. I tell you, looking back at the history with our children and all the moves you made, and I have to say, the curriculum that you have set for these kids is wonderful. Parents and children are very, very, very fortunate to be in Goodyear and have these programs. So, Deanna, thank you and, the, and your staff. Thank you, Mary and Council. All right. <clears throat> Now is the time a citizen would like to address our city council on any non-agenda item within the jurisdiction of the Goodyear City Council. And I do believe we have somebody that's filled out a card and I put it. Yes, Mayor. So yes, so we have Richard Kirschbaum. And as he comes to the dais, the council will listen to comments and may take any one of the following. Respond to criticism, request that staff investigate and report on the matter, request that the matter be scheduled on a future agenda, and I think you're used to this, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kirschbahn, but you have three minutes and the yellow light will let you know you have 20 seconds left to speak. And before you begin to speak, identify yourself clearly by stating for the record your name and if you are a good re resident and you have the floor. Richard Kirschbaum and? Janet Kirschbaum. Goodyear residents. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council members. I Could I Richard ask you, if we're difficult hearing up here. Can you bend the microphone? Yeah, good, thank you. Is that better? Mm -hmm. Yeah, much better. Okay. <clears throat> we are here tonight because we asked Bruce, the manager of the Goodyear Ballpark, for a, mom a memento to send to former Mayor James Cavanaugh. He informed us on two different occasions that he was unable to assist us in our request and that we needed to have council's approval for him to give us one. Therefore, we are asking the city of Goodyear to provide us with the gift given to the 10-year season ticket holders and the 10-year employees so that we would be able to send it to former Mayor James Cavanaugh. We were present at the ceremonial dinner and heard Bobby DiBiasio, Senior Vice President of the Cleveland Indians, thank Mayor Cavanaugh for being responsible for them moving their spring training facility to Goodyear and the construction of the ballpark. At this time, we would appreciate your notifying Bruce for him to give us the memento to send to former Mayor Cavanaugh. We await your decision and who hope it is quick and positive. Well, I thank, thank you. you very much. I'm gonna take mayor's privilege. And I was at that ceremony. And uh, I think your request is right in line. I think that Jim did many things for our city. And when we look at the stadium, I have to put Jim Cavanaugh's name up there. And uh, the teams have told me that and they greatly appreciate the, you know, coming together as the two teams. So I've talked to the city manager. I thought maybe that's what you were here for. And uh, she will make that arrangement and we will uh, present that box to you. And that'd be great if you could send it on to uh, with our best regards. We appreciate it. All right, thank, thank you, you very much. All right, thank you. All right, next is the approval of the consent agenda. Will the city clerk please read consent agenda item 6.1 through 6.6 by title only. 6.1, approval of minutes. 6.2, approve the fiscal year 2019 budget transfers. 6.3, approve an extension of the Palm Gate final plat. 6.4, adopt resolution number 2019-1949, abandoning certain streets and relinquishing all interest in certain public utility easements dedicated to the city in the final plat of Las Brisas, phase 2B, providing for an effective date of the abandonment, imposing requirements and conditions for the abandonment to become effective, providing for the expiration of the abandonment approval and providing an effective date of the resolution. Also in 6.4, number two, approve the replat of a portion of the final plat of Las Brisas, phase 2B, 2B3, 6.5, Adopt resolution number 2019-1950, conditionally relinquishing and terminating all interest in an exclusive sewer line easement located within Las Brisas development, providing for an effective date of the relinquishment and termination, imposing requirements and conditions for the relinquishment and termination to become effective, providing for the expiration of the relinquishment and termination approval and providing for an effective date of the re resolution. Also, number two, approve the replat of track C of the Mitre Land Division map of Las Brisas phase 2C and of track G of the map of dedication for West Las Brisas Drive. That, that concludes it, Mayor. Fine. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. All 
Thank you. Does council wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Bill, do you wish to remove an item? Mayor, I'm sorry, I forgot number Yeah, I was going to mention it to you, but then sorry. I looked at you and <laughs> I didn't get a little clue. So we're going to add, there is one more, 6.6. .6. Accept an exclusive water meter and line easement from Anderson Regional Manufacturing, Inc. Well, you made it before we actually voted on it, so that's great. Okay, so does anyone on the council wish? Bill, are you interested in removing any? No, ma'am. All right, thank you. All right, could I have a motion, a second, to approve the consent agenda? Do I hear the motion? So moved. Second. I heard a, a motion from Councilman Hampton, a second from Councilman Pazil. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell. Aye. Council Member Pizzello. Aye. Council Member Loretano. Aye. Council Member Stipp. Aye. Council Member Hampton. Aye. Council Member Kano. Aye. Mayor Lord. Aye. The motion carries. All right, let's go right to business. I'd like to remind council to wait for a mo Did you have something? I would like to remind council to wait for a motion and a second before discussion. So we're going to 7.1, which is a public hearing to rezone West Bullard South property from uh, um, I-1 light industrial to C-2 general commercial to I-1 with a PAD overlay. Open the public hearing. Planner three, Karen Craver presenting. Welcome, Karen. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. If it's okay with all of you, I'd like to do one presentation for 7.1 and 7.2. The West Bullard PAD South property is 103 acres at the northwest corner of Yuma Road and Bullard. It's owned by KCI Goodyear South, and they're proposing to rezone it from I-1 and C-2 to I-1 with a PAD overlay. There's about 20 acres right here that is zone C-2. The remainder is already I-1. And I'll bring your attention to this property here. It's property that you recently rezoned to I-1 for an APS substation. The West Bullard PAD North property, and again, Here's that APS substation property. It is 56 acres owned by Cardinal Capital, and they are proposing to rezone it from AU to I-1 with that same PAD overlay. And then just to the north of that, um, you probably remember this from back in February. It's the Goodyear Airport Commons, Commons PAD overlay. It extends up to Van Buren Street on the west side of Bullard Avenue. And that PAD had 67 acres of I-1 property within it, light industrial. And now I'm going to back up on you here. So we have the Goodyear West Bullard South, the north, and then the 67 acres of industrial and they will all be combined together to create this, the Compass Data Center. It's eight 227,000 square foot data center buildings, and that's the orange that you see there. They are 30 foot high buildings, and they will have exterior equipment yards on both sides of the buildings, and that's the gray on either side of the orange buildings. And because of all the power that's needed for the data centers, there will be the substation that we've been talking about, the APS one, and that's a 69 kV. There will be a second 69 kV substation approximately here that will be owned by Compass. And then there will be a 230 substation here that will also be owned by Compass. This is to show you the data center buildings. The darker area here is what I would call their front office area. It's the shorter part of the buildings right here at each end. And then in the back of that is the uh, data halls where all the server servers are stored. 
and then the outdoor equipment of some of these units that are here in the gray on the sides of the buildings. The PAD overlay that goes along with the rezoning allows the maximum height to be increased from 50 feet to 60 feet. Well, it will only be allowed to be increased to 60 feet if it's 100 feet from the west property line of the data center development. Uh, it also restricts those substations. They have to be at least 500 feet from the residential zoning district or property line to the west. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna back you up again. To the west of all of this land here that's gonna be developed into the data center is the Centera single family development. My apologies, I should have pointed that out sooner. Uh, there will be chain link fencing allowed between the buildings provided it's not visible from either Bullard or Yuma. Retention basins will be allowed along the street frontage, again, not visible from Bullard or Yuma. The PAD also requires the implementation of Bullard wash path improvements and screening of that outdoor equipment from residential properties, being Centera. Uh, this you have seen before, this is the Bullard path improvements. You approved it with Goodyear Airport Commons. It's a 10 to 12 foot compacted DG path with 10 foot landscape buffer zones on either side. And this will be, this will be the west property line of the data center development. And this will be constructed within the city's Bullard wash property. Once the data center owners develop this, it will then be maintained by the city. This is the screening exhibit that demonstrates how the screening is going to occur. Here we have the Centera residence over here, the wall that's along their east property line. This is the channelization of the Bullard wash that will occur. This is that path improvement right here. It's gonna be constructed here. Here's the property line. There will be retention basins adjacent to that. Then there will be their own landscape requirements, a service road that goes around the buildings, and there's where the outdoor equipment will be. And that's about from here to here is about five to 600 feet. They will also, because of their location on Bullard Avenue, be implementing the Bullard Avenue corridor design, which council has approved for the development of Bullard Avenue. And we also heard concerns from the Sentara residents about potential noise from these facilities. So we have included a stipulation that limits uh, the noise level at the residential property line, the Sentara property line to not exceed 65 decibels. And this is just kind of a cool thing that tells you different situations that you may recognize and what their decibel level is. So at 65, it's somewhere between normal conversation and busy city traffic at 85. And we have also limited through a stipulation of approval, the types of chillers that will be, uh, will be prohibited from being used on this site because our research has indicated that those particular types of chillers give off some irritating noise. So we're, we've restricted them from using those. And staff and the Planning and Zoning Commission are recommending approval and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have and the applicant and their representatives are here and have a presentation for you if you would like to hear that. And I'm sure they'd answer any questions you have. Well, if the applicant is here, just invite them up for their presentation. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. I'm Cameron Carter with the Rose Law Group representing Compass Data Centers. I have a presentation if you'd like to hear it. Um, Karen has done a wonderful job presenting the details of the project. 
we're in agreement with all of the staff's findings rec and recommendations and with the proposed stipulations. Um, that said, if you'd like to see my presentation, it covers much of the same information Karen did. Otherwise, we can forego that, and I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank you. Does anybody on the council want that presentation? All right, you can forego that, but thank you very much for thank coming you. up. And you'll be here if they have a question, so. I will. That's great. All right. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Okay. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, then I'm going to close the public hearing. And will the city clerk please read resolution 2019-1941 by title only, please? Adopt resolution number 2019-1941, declaring as public records those certain documents filed with the city clerk entitled Official Supplementary Zoning Map Number 18-15, West Bullard South I-1 Legal Description, and West Bullard South C-2 Legal Description, West Bullard Pad Overlay Development Regulations dated February 2019, and Bullard Avenue Corridor Design Treatment Strategies dated November 2018. Thank you. Is there a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2019-1941? Do I hear the motion? So, so moved. Second. I heard the motion by Councilman Kano and a second by Vice Mayor Campo. All right, open to council discussion. Who would like to start this discussion? Councilman Bazillo? You did a great job on your presentation. Uh, the only question I have is, is uh, again, I assume it's in there, but I, I just want to get it for the record. It, all issues that were brought up from the residents as far as the noise and the buffering is addressed in the stipulations? Yes, sir, it is addressed. We believe that we have taken care of that. Okay, thank you. Any other? Vice Mayor Campo? Karen, do you mind going back in your slides to the um, the one that shows the buffering, I guess it is, with the, the walkway. There we go. The tree to the tree on the west side, the big one, mm -hmm. does that border the land that the city owns? Or is this in the middle of what we own? Because we own a strip running right down by those homes. Do we not? That's correct. Oh, if I can back you up even further. Uh, Right here, I can't see it. Grabbing the wrong thing. I think it's here. Um, okay. Right here is yeah. property that has already been dedicated to the city for the Bullard Wash. Yes. And that dedication will continue on down these other properties all the way down to Yuma. So this is the border between. Oops. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, so this is the, the border between city-owned property to the west and privately-owned property to the east. And that same property line is... Just doesn't want to behave tonight, does it? Is this property line <laughs> that you no longer see. There we go. So, yeah, this is all... That's all city-owned property. It's the middle of the Bullard Wash from the tree. It's the east, east. eastern side of the Bullard Wash Got adjacent it. to the privately owned property. Sorry, all I right, should have just said that. That alone is giving quite a buffering to those residents anyway because that's city property there. So in the in the path will start at um, Van Buren. Yes. And then go all the way to Yuma. Yes. The walking path. It, it will be developed in phases as the data center will be developed in right. phases. Right. Is the data center developing it, paying for it, and then we just take it over for maintenance after it's completed? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Council Member Stiff, do you have any questions? No, ma'am, no questions. Thank you. Council Member Hampton? I just want to clarify. So I thought I read in the packet, was there... There's no stipulation on the type of air cooling system, just the level of noise that it can't exceed, correct? I thought I heard read something about a train, certain train model there was, system. There was, Mayor, if I may, Councilman Hampton, there is a stipulation of two train chiller systems, and they're 
we have the, the specs on them that cannot be used because it's our understanding those particular ones have a higher pitch to them. But I guess to, but either way, whatever they use, it won't go over the 65, 65 uh, decibels. That is correct. Essentially, yeah, because I don't, yeah, I don't mind what they use necessarily, just as I thought we had the requirement not above 65 decibels, so. Right. Okay, just want to clarify, thank you. Are you finished? Councilman Cano? I know that citizens have come forward and I did watch the planning and zoning and, and heard their concerns. And um, this, as I have observed uh, in my time of being on council and also sitting in the audience, anytime you change vacant land, it, it's always um, feels very personal to the neighbors. Um, this is such an exciting opportunity for us to have something we've never had before with the tech center. And uh, so we are definitely pioneering something new uh, for the neighborhood, definitely putting a lot of work into the landscaping along this bullard, creating that tech corridor. So that part is very, very exciting. I'm glad that you did catch the thing on the decibels, uh, the noise. I think that uh, would have been very unfortunate had you not. And um, I do have a question about the 500 foot barrier between the substation and the property line. If you could point out where that start and stops. Oh, no. Sorry. Uh, the substations are the dark gray here. So the 500 feet has to be from the residential property line, which is over here. Okay. Because I'd seen a several property lines. I wanted to make sure I understood uh, where that was from. And... Um, that's all my questions, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Then I have a question. Of course, uh, when my husband plays tennis every week, he comes home with a series of questions. And uh, today, uh, that was alarm about uh, the metal gate. And it, you know, because we don't allow metal gates, uh, metal fencing, um, and they use the word chain link. Uh, and so I assured him um, that I would have that explanation given at the council tonight and hoping his tennis partners are listening. I'm not sure about that, but he'll get the information back. So would you just repeat that and show that slide again that shows sure. the fence line and just say exactly where it is? This is, as I said, the, the front office part of the buildings. And you can see right here that there's a eight foot high fence and it, it's, not, it's not your typical chain link. It's a much more solid, sturdy, heavier metal than that. And it's coated, it's gonna be darker. It's not gonna be the shiny reflective of your, of your typical chain link. And it's gonna be having the masonry pilasters every 50 feet. Don't hold me to that, but I think it's every 50 feet. And then, and this, this will be towards the front of the site where the landscaping is. So you can see that's all part of what you'll see, that lower fence and the landscaping. Then in front of the data halls, there's a 14 foot high section of that that's much closer to and encloses those outdoor yards. And again, stronger, heavier, uh, a more substantial weave to it, a darker color to it. It's not your typical chain link. Where the chain link will occur occasionally is as they develop phases and you, you're not, like when these two buildings get built, and there's gonna be just those two buildings sitting there for a while before the next building gets built in the next phase. Then there can be chain link in there provided it's not seen from Yuma or Bullard. So if we're, we're doing interim measures of fencing with the interim development of the whole center. I appreciate that, thank you very much. So we're ready for roll call. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Council Member Loritano? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. 
Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Councilmember Kano? Aye. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Will the city clerk please read ordinance 2019-1429 by title only? Adopt ordinance number 2019-1429, rezoning approximately 103 acres of land at the northwest corner of Bullard Avenue and Yuma Road, extending west to Bullard Wash and north to approximately one half mile south of Van Buren Street from the I-1 Light Industrial Park and C-2 General Commercial zoning districts to the I-1 Light Industrial Park zoning district with a pad overlay. Amending the zoning map of the city of Goodyear, providing for non-abridgement, providing for corrections, providing for severability, providing for an effective date, and providing for, non for penalties. Thank you. Is there a motion and a second to adopt ordinance 2019-1429? Do I hear the motion? Second. I heard a motion by Vice Mayor Kemp. Oh, no, by me. I'm sorry, it was you. All right. Vice Mayor Laura Tunnell, and then who is the... Yeah. All right, and second by Councilman Hampton. Open for council discussion. No discussion. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell. Aye. Council Member Stipp. Aye. Council Member Hampton. Aye. Council Member Kano. Aye. Council Member Pizzello. Aye. Council Member Loritano. Aye. Mayor Lord. Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. All right, let's go to item 7.2 as a public hearing to rezone the West Bullard North property from AU Agriculture Urban to I-1 Light Industrial Park with a PAD, PAD overlay. Open public hearing Aye. planner again, Karen Craver will be presenting. Karen? Um, unless you have any additional questions, my presentation that I just gave holds for this one as well. Thank you. There's no questions. So, uh, are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. All right. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right. We're going to close the meeting. Will the city clerk read, read resolution 2019 19 1940 by title only, please? Adopt resolution number 2019 1940, declaring as public records those certain documents filed with the city clerk entitled Official Supplementary Zoning Map Number 18 13. West Bullard North Legal Description, West Bullard Pad Overlay Development Regulations, dated February 2019, and Bullard Avenue Corridor Re Design Treatment Strategies, dated November 2018. Thank you. Is there a motion a second to adopt resolution 2019-1940? Do I hear that motion? I'll move. Second. Oh, me. Thank you. A motion by Vice Mayor and a second by Councilman Brazillo. Open for council discussion. No discussion. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Councilmember Kano? Aye. Councilmember Pizzello? Aye. Councilmember Loritano? Aye. Councilmember Stipp? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Great. Will the city clerk please read resolution 2019 1428 by title only? Adopt ordinance number 2019 1428, rezoning approximately 56 acres of land located on the west side of Bullard Avenue, approximately 3 eighths of a mile south of Van Buren Street from the AU Agricultural Urban Zoning District to the I-1 Light Industrial Park Zoning District with a pad overlay. Amending the zoning map of the City of Goodyear, providing for non-abridgement, providing for corrections, providing for severability, providing for an effective date, and providing for penalties. Thank you. Is there a motion a second to adopt ordinance number 2019-1428? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Council Member Kano and a second by uh, Councilman Pazillo. Open for council discussion. No discussion. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Council Member Pazillo? Aye. Council Member Loritano? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you so much. We're on 7.3 as a public hearing to consider the use permission use permit for brush fire tackles and Dutch Brothers coffee. Open public hearing, planner two, Alex Lasinski will present. Alex? Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Um, the use permit for you tonight is the Dutch Bros and brush fire tacos. The original use permit for the drive through for, for two drive throughs um, on this site at the southwest corner of Fillmore Street and Estrella Parkway was approved in June 2017. Um, it included the drive through uh, two, two lanes at Dutch Bros and a single lane at the, as of that time, unknown second drive through. Um, the request is to add one drive through lane to each restaurant. 
These are the existing approvals. Um, so like I said, one lane on the north portion for brush fire and two lanes on the south side, which exists today. Um, and uh, stipulation number four of the 2017 use permit approval required a separate use permit um, approval if the drive-through lanes were differed from the original master plan. So with this site plan, or with this use permit, um, a new, like I mentioned, a new lane would be added to Dutch Bros, and a, a new lane would be added to the north drive-through. Uh, on the Dutch Bros site, it would remove an existing parking space in some of the landscaping area. Um, and the, since brush fire is not yet built, you wouldn't see the change yet. Um, that brush fire would, uh, a site plan amendment would be required if this use permit was approved. The, um, similar to the original use permit approval, um, we did an alternative citizen review. Um, so no meeting was held, but we did send out proper noticing. The Planning and Zoning Commission meeting was held on March 13th. Um, the public hearing uh, brought no opposition or objection to the request, and staff has not received any um, any opposition uh, aside from the public hearing. Staff finds that the with the addition of the lanes, it still meets the city requirements. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval on March 13th. The applicant is here and available for questions. Um, and this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Would the applicant like to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, Council Members. Ooh, I talk. Uh, uh, my name is Bill Cantieri. I'm with uh, Piazza Restaurant Development. Um, and uh, we just uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, present again before you. The, uh, the reason for this request is, is primarily what we just want to add these extra lanes as collectors to make sure that, that the traffic does get off of the main drive aisles into the, collect, you know, in, in, into the drive lanes. Uh, you know, so so that there there is no not a chance of overflow into the adjacent development. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody else like to speak? All right. Then I'm going to close this public hearing. So is there a motion and a second to approve the use permit for the Brush Fire Tacos and Dutch Brothers Coffee? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a, a motion by Councilman Laura Tano and a second by Councilman Hampton. Sorry. Open for council discussion. Councilman Laura Tano. I, I want to say welcome, um, especially Brush Fire Tacos. That sounds absolutely wonderful. And I do want to give them a compliment for looking ahead and being um, very foresighted with regard to this because that Dutch Brothers, they've done an excellent job controlling the traffic to keep it out of the rest of the Safeway parking lot there. I mean, they've got it blocked off. They've got cones. They've got people taking orders. I mean, so they're really doing a great job. And I think it says a lot for their business that they have to have three exactly. lanes to queue up to. So um, welcome. And I, I think it'll work out well. Bill, do you have any comments? No, ma'am, no comments. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes or no? No. Oh, okay. Um, yes, Councilman Bazzillo. Yeah, I like the idea of the lanes uh, with the three to make sure it doesn't back up into the other traffic because you, you typically there are, a lot of those lanes are full. You know, I travel there quite a bit to those areas with some of those uh, shops there. So anything you can do to kind of keep that all within that area, you know, Dutch Bros is, is really appreciated. So thank you. Well, I think it was brilliant because there is a Dutch Brothers that is closing uh, in one of the cities because of the traffic blo and blocking of the traffic, and they're going to have to rebuild in another location. So when I saw this, I said, wow, that's a good plan. So I'm, I'm very pleased with this. All right, let's vote on this then. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. All right, we're at 7.4, is a request to adopt the results of the March 12, 2019 special primary election. Our city clerk, Darcy McCracken, uh, to present. Darcy? Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is a request for Council to adopt the resolution that adopts the results of the 2019 special primary election, which is also known as a canvas. 
This election resulted in 10,205 voters casting ballots out of 46,328 registered voters, ballots mailed, which is about a 22.03% turnout. All three propositions had a majority of votes saying yes, and each of the three candidates received a majority of the vote. City Hall was used as a ballot replacement site, which allowed voters to drop off ballots or replace a ballot if needed. We had a good group of election staff that were well organized and kept the flow going. And that concludes my presentation, unless you have any questions. Thank you. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right. Will the city clerk please read resolution 2019-1943 by title only, please. Adopt resolution number 2019-1943, declaring and adopting the results of a special primary election held on March 12, 2019, declaring the election of three council members, declaring results on three propositions, and ordering the city clerk to record this resolution. Thank you. Could I have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2019-1943? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Vice Mayor Campbell and the second by Councilman Pizzillo. Open for council discussion. Any discussion from you, Bill? No, Mayor, no, no right. question. Thank you. All right, let's do roll call vote. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Laura Tano? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. All right, we're down to 7.5. It's a request to approve the amendment to the Palm Valley Medical Campus Comprehensive Sign Package. We have Planner 3, Steve Caretia to present. Steve? Thank you, Mayor. Council members, I do have an amendment to the Comprehensive Sign Package for you. It is to the Palm Valley Medical Campus. Uh, that center located south of McDowell, uh, Future City Park here on I-10, uh, the hospital over here. That Alante site is this square right here, and that is the subject of the amendment tonight. Uh, surrounding Adelante building, uh, we have the J.C. Penney and Lowe Center to the east. Again, the park, uh, additional uh, medical and office and the hospital here, additional commercial here. Uh, this is all the Palm Valley PAD. Uh, the master plan for the campus here was approved in 1997. In 2005, the campus expanded to include this acreage here, which includes that Alante piece. In 2006, we had a sign package approved for the medical campus. And that sign package set the types of signs that were allowed, the size and location for the entire medical campus. Uh, we had an amendment in 2013, and that was to allow the hospital icon to be placed on the hospital building. Uh, the request before you tonight is just for the Adelante building. Uh, they have two signs that they would like to put on their building, and this site plan just shows the outline of the building right here. For reference, we have Cornerstone, Cornerstone Boulevard that wraps around the building. This is the west side of the building right here, and this is the south side. So this is the west side facing the hospital. They would like to place one wall sign on the west elevation. They would like to place the same sign on the south elevation. With the current site, with the current comprehensive sign package, they would like to increase the size of the sign that's on the south elevation. So currently, what they could uh, receive would be a sign about 56 square feet of signage. Uh, what they would like to do is go to 185 square feet. And this just shows you the wall sign that they would like to place on a building. This is the west side facing the hospital. And here is the south side facing the park and I-10. Again, the same size of sign that they would like to use. Uh, another amendment they would like to do is currently the sign package limits a double text for a sign to about two and a half feet in height. Uh, with this sign, they'd like to go to about almost six feet in height. So that's this. There we go. That's about this area here. You have two lines of text. I'd like to go about six feet in height for that. And then total for this building, the sign package would say your maximum sign area is 200 square feet. 
So with these two signs, they would like to request an aggregate sign area of about 371 square feet. So the two signs would equal that 371 square feet. Otherwise, there's no deviations to the campus sign package. And again, this, these amendments apply only to the Adelante building. None of the other buildings within the center, these deviations would not apply to any other building. Uh, as outlined in the staff report, we do find the amendment does meet the criteria that we look at when we look at amendments to a sign package. Uh, we found the signs are no larger than necessary uh, they're located to allow sufficient visibility. Uh, they're designed to complement the design of the building and no surrounding land uses will be impacted, especially there are no residential units that would be impacted by light trespass or glare. Uh, Planning Zoning Commission, uh, they reviewed this at their meeting on March 13th. They did vote to forward a recommendation of approval to the council. There was no opposition to this amendment voiced at the council meeting. Uh, with that, Mayor, staff, and the Commission, we are recommending approval of this amendment subject to the two stipulations in the staff report. Uh, that concludes my presentation, Mayor. I'm available for questions. The applicant is also here if you have questions. Would the applicant like to talk? No, he said he's fine. All right. You may get a question or two, so we'll, we'll wait a moment. So, uh, Anybody else in the audience like to speak? I need a motion and a second to approve the amendment to the Palm Valley Medical Campus Comprehensive Sign Package. Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilman Hampton and a second by um, Councilman Bazillo. Open for council discussion. Councilman Bazillo. I, I see the sign and I see over the left how, it, how it's written out there. Is, is it going to be just black lettering with that... Uh, flower clover or what it is to the left of it or is it actually got a dark it's going to look like the dark black background with the white lettering how is it actually going to look on the building because on the building it looks like just the letters are showing up in black with the uh you know with the flower next to it mayor council members the applicant may expand better on it um, this is the daytime view uh, mm -hmm. this is the nighttime view showing how it would kind of look uh, lit from behind. Uh, so basically it's kind of two views that they wanted to make sure you saw. But I can ask the applicant to expand on that. Okay, because I'm trying to figure how that lit goes from black to light white, um, if it's gonna be lit. The applicant's ready to, please wait and just then the microphone, thank you. Thank you. So wait, uh, the sorry. nighttime photo. Excuse me, wait, I'm wait, gonna wait. stop you. Just say your name and address sorry. for the record. Sorry, sorry I'm Tim Herzer and I'm with Air Park Signs and Graphics, and I represent um, Adelante in their request for this sign. So um, they're all individually uh, made letters along with their logo, the Lotus at the side. The dark picture that you're seeing at the top is just to demonstrate what that'll look like at night with a dark background. So that is their brick in the background that it's supposed to emulate. The red brick, the red so there's not a panel, it's just individual letters. Okay, okay, but the, the letters are black or the letters white? The letters are clear. White. They're white? They're white. Okay, so they're white. So when they're lit up, um, you're just going to see the black uh, at night, they'll be lit up, I guess, the fluorescent or? Uh, they're lit by a halo illumination. Okay. So they have a forward, the, the front of it, the a light goes through the front, and then it also halo illuminates around it. I got you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Councilman Hampton. And then I'm sure this is a, I'm probably asking a simple question, but this, the south end on the picture right here we're looking, is that in relation, is that the size of the sign in relation to the building? That is pretty to scale. accurate. That is to scale. To scale? Okay. To the best of our ability. Yes. All right. Thank you. Bill, do you have any questions? No, ma'am. No questions. All right. Thank you. Vice Mayor Campo. Um, I'd like to. I have a question, staff, please. Have we allowed anyone, any business in our city to ask for this type of a sign before and have we approved it? And if so, who or where, what, what have we done that this isn't setting a precedent for? Mayor, council members, we have several sign packages throughout the city. 
probably some that you would see that had large signs are like the super target on the future loop 303 there. They have are they the same size as this? That would be much larger than this sign. It, it, basically, the scale of that building was so large, they could get such a large sign, and it looked proportional to their building. But that would be an example that kind of stands out, that, that little round logo. Christopher may have another example. <laughs> Christopher? Excuse me, Steve. Thank you. Mayor, Council, if I may, for just a second to uh, add on to what Steve is adding. The hospital on the south side facing the interstate has a very large, prominent blue and white H, which also um, greatly exceeded the sign package allowances or, or the sign allowances and was approved by Council as well. So I hope that helps answer your but question. But those are the, that, that's the only building that's, that is that I mean, I, I really don't want to set another president. We have enough trouble with our signs and the merchants that want larger signs, and we keep saying no, and we don't allow them to have the large signs against the freeway. Um, and I don't want to undo what we have been so careful to take care of for many years to keep the city looking good. And I do know this is a health clinic, not a hospital. And I do know what they need it. I'm surprised they do not have a monument sign in front or something just like the hospital does. Um, is there a reason why they don't? I, I think you describe the location. Of, I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak up a little bit. I'll take mayor's privilege again. Um, it's where it's located from McDowell. Um, it's very different. Um, it's sort of like, a, you know, how we have different office buildings that sit way behind and they want to sign. Um, and so I would say that's probably one, and I'll let him speak for himself on that. Um, but I think the location uh, is probably what's call, calling for this. So I'll let him answer the question for you, Vice Mayor. Mayor and Council members, was it the question just in learn? to know about the monument signs for this center? No, I wanted to know why they don't have a monument sign up. You cannot see this clinic from, from McDowell unless you turn on Palm Valley and you go to the end and then you see it. So you don't see it at all. Um, if you're in the hospital and you're lucky enough to have one of those nice rooms with a window, you're going to be able to see it then. Um, but, I mean... I don't know that we're, we're, I don't know if this is enough for them when we have monument signs elsewhere throughout the city, even at the hospital has one. I don't know where they would put it, quite frankly, but there's not even one to identify on that corner by the tropical smoothie place and the wellness place across the street. Mayor Council will tag team this answer, but I can at least show on Elmo the plan for the monument signs for the campus. For the, for, just for the hospital, I mean, just for the health clinic. For the health campus. Yes, Mayor, for, for part of the entire part campus. Of. And for reference, this is the hospital and this is the Adelante site over here. It's currently shown as parking lot, but this is the Adelante building right here. And you can see these are the monument signs here. Uh, we have some here and also internal to the site. They did not have any along Cornerstone Boulevard. They wanted to have traffic come in here, then disperse through the site. So, so it is visible from McDowell, a sign is? Yes, ma'am. Because I think that's what she was asking right here, Wally. See the blues from McDowell? I, I don't see that the building is visible from McDowell, truthfully. I mean, 
I just don't want them to have to come back in four or five months and ask for a monument sign if we've not addressed that. And I'm not real thrilled about having a big sign on the building. The building's lovely, but I mean, you know, I just don't want to set a president. Right. Mayor and council members, the applicant has indicated in all our conversations with the applicant have been they do not want a monument sign, that their preference is the larger wall signs. They feel that is their in their best interest and their customers. Because okay. we asked them the same question, and they would like to go with the two wall signs. Okay. Any other comments? Um, I like the sign. Uh, I think the logo is beautiful, and I think the big thing you'll see it from I uh, from I ten. Um, so I think it is is adequate, and by the curve and size of that building, it's difficult. Um, so it doesn't have three stories or ten stories or anything that you know is going to. So I think you've done the best job, and I think people after a while on McDowell will get very used to seeing this sign. It's just a matter of they're going to see something new out there, and so that's going to get their attention. And the idea you've got one, two, three there. And then you still have them when they're uh, on the near the shopping center area in there. So I, I think it's quite visible. Um, I don't, and I like that. So any other comments before we vote? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right. We have one opposition and the rest aye. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Let's go to 7.6 is a request to authorize the city manager to approve the amendment number six to the intergovernmental agreement between the city and the regional public transit authority to add Sunday transit service. Administrator Services Supervisor Christine McMurdy presenting. Welcome, Christine. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, thank you. And I'm actually going to start off with a little apology. Um, I was all set to put this item on consent. And I got the word last week from the city manager who brilliantly made the observation that this is great news. We are expanding transit. Why shouldn't we share this and talk about it a little bit? So all I have for you tonight is uh, a slide for Elmo, but I think it's gonna give you a pretty good picture that Zoom is doing pretty well for the mile and a half or so that it's um, traveling in Goodyear. So uh, Avondale staff reached out and said, hey, um, how do you feel about adding Sunday? Uh, we still have enough uh, lottery funds that we can use to accommodate that request. Uh, and they have had quite a few folks ask for that service. So I'm here tonight to ask for your authorization to add Sunday to the schedule. Currently, the service operates Monday through Friday from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday and holidays, which you approved recently, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. for 50 cents a ride. Um, before we talk about Sunday, though, I wanted to give you just a snapshot of the ridership uh, since we started in 2015. And while you can see that some of these uh, sticks are going down as you look at 2018, um, I did a little bit more checking. And if you look at the center there, for some reason in 2018, our ridership was up during the hottest months of the year. Uh, I have no explanation for that, and neither do the planners of Valley Metro, but we're going to probably take another look at that. Uh, overall, though, um, in 2018, transit ridership was, was down across the valley, and uh, about the same percentage that you're seeing for the Zoom route. And although um, the ridership looks like it was down it was if if you look at this from an average if you do an average for every year overall for 16 17 and 18 our ridership along the goodyear extension was up in 2016 we had an average of 736 passengers in 2017 it was 892 and 2018 961 uh, over the year. So it's doing pretty well. Good. Um, according to Valley Metro, uh, the reasons transit ridership was down, not just in the Valley, but across the country, is uh, lower gas prices, uh, an improving economy, higher auto ownership rates, and a rise in Uber and Lyft usage. 
uh, which is absolutely true. And we're starting to, from a transit perspective, look at that as an opportunity maybe to do more with transit using some of these transportation network companies. Um, there's also an increase in online education, uh, which also impacts transit. If you don't have to go to school after work or during the day and you can do it on your computer, it's like people are starting to take advantage of that opportunity. So the highest activity stops, I'm just gonna move to this map, which uh, I'm gonna go ahead and include this in your uh, manager's weekly so that you can see it a little bit better. But that green line and all the way up to the red, the red at the top is Avalon Drive, which is the community park. And then uh, you see Thomas there, which one side is Goodyear, one side is Avondale. And then going further south, that's Litchfield Road. We're hitting our restaurants. We're hitting uh, our soon, I, I guess it soon it's gonna be under construction, multi-family housing, which that could be a really great thing. Um, and then down on McDowell, uh, I don't know if you remember this, but the city of Avondale does not have a target. We get a lot of people uh, that take the Zoom just so that they can shop at our target on Litchfield Road. And then of course the hospital complex. So those are the major activity centers uh, that Valley Metro staff have told us are being used uh, along the Zoom route. Um, so like I said, Avondale staff asked uh, several times if they could start Sunday service. Uh, we had the resources available to do it. Just a reminder, we are not using any general fund money uh, on any of the transit services. Your fixed route service uh, along McDowell Road is your Proposition 400, uh, the half cent sales tax. Um, and then the Zoom service is federal funding, 50% federal funding and then the rest of it is the uh, lottery funds. So all of this is regional funding. The express bus service at the park and ride is also regional funding. None of this is general fund. Um, but to give you an idea, the cost for the remainder of this fiscal year to implement Sunday, so just through the end of June, is $4,400. And then, uh, and that again has that federal operating assistance. The full fiscal year, which you will have the opportunity to approve when you see the budget for fiscal year 20, to add just Sunday service will be about $23,000. That will be in addition to the regular Monday through Friday and then holiday service, so it'll, it'll be larger. But the, just the Sunday service for the new fiscal will be about $23,000. Um, also, the, so the reason that uh, people are asking for Sunday service, uh, shopping, employment, and there are 12 churches along the Zoom route. And lots of folks are asking for the opportunity to be able to take the Zoom to get to church. Thank so you. that is what I have for you tonight. And I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right. Is there a motion and a second to authorize the city manager to approve the Sixth Amendment to the Intergovernmental Agreement? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. I heard a, I heard a motion by uh, council, member, council Member Hampton and Council Member Loretano did the second. So Bill, thank you for trying to get in there. Appreciate it. So uh, open for council discussion. Bill, do you have any uh, discussion? No, ma'am. All right. Council, Vice Mayor. I've got a quick question. How often does this Zoom bus run? Every 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes from yeah. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday? Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9, I'm sorry, 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then Saturday and holidays, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. On Sunday, it would also be 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Uh, just one comment. You, I think by that cost, that's great. We're getting that. But when people talk about within the city and as far as uh, to destroy a neighborhood, uh, you can see that uh, how much it costs uh, to, to run transit or have your own transit. Um, so it's our goal and we'll keep working towards that. But someday it would be really nice to have it within the city um, so that people could could travel wherever they wanted to within our city. So, all right, let's vote on this. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Bill. All opposed? That's it. We have it. Thank you very much. Now it's council time. Do you have any comments, commendation, reports on current events? I don't know. You're smiling down there, Councilman Hampton. 
Uh, well, I know why. Just figured it out. Okay. You have anything that you want to comment, Vice Mayor? I have something for the city manager. All right. Can you wait to this? Letter? I certainly uh, can. Yes. Councilman. Well, um, well, I attended my Kano. first uh, National League of Cities conference in Washington, D.C., along with everybody else. And uh, it was interesting to meet people from all over the country, as well as for me to get to know some of our neighbors better. But I left feeling that Goodyear's uh, in a really good place, and our future is is very strong and bright. Okay. Any other comments? Yes, Councilman Hampton. Uh, I attended uh, opening Little League opening day, which was fun. That was a good time as well. I know there's been a lot of us were there, but I thought it was a great time. I think you have. I said around 700 youth signed up from across the area. So that's pretty exciting with families and people using our facilities. And it's just a good, it's a great program. My kids yeah. were in it last year. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a good program. So it's good to see all the kids out there, the flyovers of the bioplanes, the, oh, yeah. just the, the, all the smiling faces, all the families, all the excitement of, for opening day. So I think we yeah. are a baseball a baseball town. Well, so, thank city. you for mentioning we were all there and it was pretty spectacular and well run and the yeah. rock raffles and the things they had were oh, were very, yeah, very nice. <laughs> but uh, the one thing that stood out for me is that there are now four young women teams yeah. and we Hallelujah. never had that before. So I, I just think it's really a great addition. Uh, the, Council it, Pizzello? Yeah, in addition to um, being at the ballpark, I I really enjoyed the Amondale School District uh, Cafe, uh, which they held. Um, several of us were there. Uh, I liked the way um, the uh, Dr. Hargrove brought all the different schools together, plus outsiders, to try to see how they can improve service to the students and uh, just better customer service overall. Uh, very um, interesting on how they went ahead about that approach. And again, it was it was schools. It was uh, some of their other um, individuals that participate in the schools, elected officials were there. So um, and it was a really interesting experience how they went about trying to get different ideas from different people outside the organization as well as inside, see how they can better serve the community. So it was, I thought it was very educational. Thank you for those words. I totally agree with any other words. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I wanted to just say that I attended the Estrella Mountain Car Club Car Show on Saturday and they had over 250 cars on displays and they were beautiful. And if I had to estimate the crowd, I would say between 500 and 750 people were there. It was a wonderful time. They had food trucks, they had music, they had raffles, they had uh, a flash dance that was just superb by the women in Australia. And it was just a really fun afternoon, and it was very, very well run and very well received, and we're looking forward to the one next year. What was your best in show? Oh, gosh, my best in show, the vice mayor's trophy, <laughs> was an orange truck that a, <laughs> that a young man had, the, uh, his grandfather had given him the truck when he was 12 years old. And he and his grandfather totally restored the truck themselves completely, except for the upholstery job. And it's just beautiful. It was called Lollipop. And it was very orange and lovely. Thank you for attending that. You're Great. welcome. Greatly appreciated. All right, then I'm going to turn this over to the city manager. You're on the floor. Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce a special guest that we've had with us this evening. Um, it's my privilege to be participating in the Honorary Commander Program at Luke Air Force Base this cycle. And the, the purpose of the program is to help the community and business leaders gain first-hand experience with the Air Force mission and discover what role the base has in our nation's defense. Um, and we're lucky enough to also have my match at the base who's interested in learning more about the city. So she came over to City Hall a little bit this afternoon and wanted to participate and watch this council meeting this evening. So if I could ask uh, Lieutenant Colonel Stephanie Steeman to rise so we can acknowledge her. And just to give you her official title, she's a squadron commander of the 56th Medical Support Squadron and administrator for the 56th Medical Group at Luke Air Force Base. And she joined Luke in June of 18, I believe. So she's relatively new here as well. So, um, so very pleased to have this relationship and, uh, and enjoying this experience so far. I wanted to give council a few updates on events. 
Uh, the Goodyear Police hosted the Shredathon event this weekend on Saturday, March 23rd. The event lasted from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m., and we had a total of 378 vehicles come through the line with a total of 16,420 pounds, which is 8.21 tons of recyclable paper to be wow. shredded. This is the environmental equivalent of saving 140 trees, 3,120 gallons of oil, 57,470 gallons of water, 39,408 kilowatt hours of energy, and 821 cubic yards of landfill space. Each vehicle received an educational pamphlet containing information about preventing, it, preventing identity theft and fraud. And once again, it was a very successful event. PD received many thanks and positive <coughs> comments to staff, volunteers, and explorers from the line, from people waiting in line as well as on Facebook. I also wanted to give a brief recap because spring training season has again come to conclusion. Uh, the final game was played yesterday, and I just wanted to share a few highlights, although you'll get your official <coughs> update at a future council meeting. So in 2019, we dedicated, we de dedicated to celebrating 10 years of baseball in Goodyear and introduced our new baseball mascot, Ace. Our 10-year celebration game on March 17th drew the largest largest crowd on a St. Patrick's Day thus far with over 8,600 fans. We had two sellouts this season, the Reds and Dodgers on March 15th and the Indians and Cubs on March 22nd. Our season attendance was up 2% over last year with 1,066, I'm sorry, 166,460 guests and a more comprehensive break breakdown will be forthcoming. So thank you. Thank you, and Wally, you have a, a request of the city manager, go ahead. Thank you, I have two, uh, Madam City Manager. Um, I am requesting again that somehow we come up with a map of Goodyear. We do not have um, a map that we can actually show what Goodyear is, where our boundaries are, and especially this past month when I was in Washington, D.C., and I was presenting some things that we're doing and how uh, how much development is left to occur in my city, and they asked for a map, and I went to the city website, and there was not one. I asked Council Member Pizzello if he'd seen one, and uh, I know we have a GIS department, and I would assume that when we give these packets to prospective developers, or people wanting to uh, relocate in our city that we have a map to give them at least. Uh, and at least it's available at the Chamber of Commerce because so many people coming from back east, um, that's the first place they stop is at the Chamber office to see what the city offers. And um, I was very surprised to see that we didn't have anything that we give out like that. And my second request is, um, I don't want you to take this for gospel, but I'm not asking for a work session unless you think it's necessary, but I definitely want us to have a conversation on this city providing some type of senior transportation. We talk about it every year and we don't come up with a solution. And we had that uh, young man with his mother who was uh, visually impaired that pleaded for us to do something, and it's come to my attention again uh, of residents um, throughout the city that need transportation, that can't go to the Zoom, and we need to either um, uh, work with Area Agency on Aging to expand their bus system or, or um, Metro, I guess. I don't know. We, we just need to be able to offer that to this city. I know we're expanding the lines where we deliver meals on wheels. I was able to get those boundary lines to extend further into our city because we have a greater need this year than we had last year for meals, delivery meals from the, the uh, county area on the agency and the senior center. But I really do want us to have a serious conversation if we can provide vouchers or get a bus route up here. That's all we need to do so that they have some way that they can get to their doctor appointments, even to come down from Australia to the new dialysis center. There's no transportation for them. And a lot of the 
families that are doing caregiving for their mothers and dads and aunts and uncles, they're working full time and they can't take off and take these uh, relatives to doctor appointments. Um, and it's just, uh, it's a real burden for these families. And I think we need to have a conversation to see if there's something we can't do as a city. Go ahead, so if I may, Mayor. Um, regarding the second item first, we do have a transit work session that will be coming up in May. Uh, we're confirming the date, but it'll be either May 6th or May 20th. We're, we're looking to confirm that. So thank you. We'll make sure that's covered as part of that presentation. And regarding the map, um, there's lots of different variations of maps. So we'll make sure to get with you to get you what you need, but also to make sure the chamber has something that could be useful for our visitors. Thank you. All right. The next meeting will be a special meeting on April 1st at 5 p.m. at the City Hall. April 8th, 2019, we'll see, uh, be a CFD meeting with a regular meeting following that. Uh, before I um, bang the gavel, I want to thank Councilman Stipp for staying on the phone and, and being part of this uh, meeting tonight. Um, sure. We'll, go ahead, Val. No, I just said thank you. Well, we're thanking you. So uh, there being no further business discussed, this meeting is adjourned.